Let's take a look at Lidl's uh, Parkside Cordless LED Work Light 10 Watt. This is a rechargeable work light. And it's very densely packed into the case. You've got uh, the floor mounting stand. You've got a little thumbnail for that. You've got the instructions in every European language under the sun. Wouldn't it be great if everybody just spoke one language? It would solve so many problems in the world. And you have a USB-C lead. Now, the unit itself has just one little charge indicator in the back. It's got the charge port and it's got an on-off switch. And it literally is just, I don't think there's any other mode other than on and off. That is it. Uh, what if I hold it? Does it go into SOS mode? No, it doesn't. It's literally just on and off, which is functional. But I kind of prefer it if you've got different intensity settings just to conserve sort of battery energy. Anyway, that said, what we've got in the front is the... Uh, standard little surface mount LEDs, uh, a cluster of nine of them. Zoom down this a little bit. And well, let's just cut straight to the chase. Let's get the side bracket off. And we'll pop it open. And see what the circuitry is like. I'm expecting very simple circuitry in this. This is a couple of screws going into the side for this sort of handle. Um, and I see... Four screws here. Let's whip that out. Is it going to be an 18650? I do hope so. I wouldn't expect anything less than at least one 18650. It looks as though there could be room for two. Maybe, maybe not. We'll find out when we open it. So that's these screws here. Out. We've got a little cover. We've got the reflector. Uh, it's a single 18650. So let's pop this out. I'm just being cautious here because uh, I'm in accommodation at the moment and there is, coincidentally, a smoke detector directly above the bench. Well, that's nice. I think everything is the one circuit board here, which kind of makes sense. Is it? No, the... I'm not sure about the USB connector. Let's drop random screws in amongst here. Oh no, there is a separate circuit board at the back, so I can unplug this. And I can unplug the battery, which is nice. It's now diffused the potential boom. And we'll get this sucker board out. And this is probably the one that's going to contain all the juicy bits that we're interested in. So let's see if we can get this out. Ah, there we have it. Oh, that's quite complicated for something so basic. So I see a couple of transistors down here. Oh, this is strange. Right, tell you what. Uh, I'll take a picture of this and we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. And we'll start, first of all, with the little circuit board that LEDs on it that is underneath the reflector here. And that circuit board is very simple. It has four 2.7 ohm resistors in parallel, feeding nine LEDs in parallel. And the first hack you can do with this light... Oh, let me zoom down this a little bit. Let me get in closer. The first hack you can do to this is to uh, cut off as many of these resistors as you want, or indeed change the values. Although, keep in mind, it is quite hard to solder onto because it is an aluminium core PCB. But there is a, if you wanted to, say, have a light that just had a longer runtime, lower intensity, you could just chop off a couple of these resistors, and that would do that. And that is a fairly simple hack. You take the front off the light and then just chop them off. You don't even need to take circuit boards out. Let's bring in the other circuit boards. The back of the main circuit board is not terribly exciting. It's got the two connectors, it's got the USB connection soldering point. It's worth mentioning that the USB-C port here does not have the programming resistors that tell smart power supplies to put power out. So if you try plugging this into a smart power supply, it may not do anything. Uh, usually it's USB-C to USB-C, and they do provide a USB-A to USB-C cable. And if you plug this into a standard dumb power supply, it will be fine. Now let's take a look at the, the main circuit board here, and I'll show you some unique things about it. For some reason, Aldi and Lidl always seem to kind of go fairly different to normal circuitry. So there's a USB-C port, and it leads to a 4056 charge control chip with a 1.8K resistor that programs the current that's been used to charge a lithium cell. But 
um, there's no charge monitoring from this chip done by the microcontroller. However, the microcontroller can turn power to the USB port, uh, between the USB port and the charge chip. It can turn it off completely. And there's two reasons I think they could do that. They could, it must be sensing the cell voltage in this chip itself, but also it means that if it detects maybe it's taking far too long to charge the damaged cell, it can shut the power off or it may be that if this fails in any way and it detects the voltage going too high, it can also shut the power off. Uh, any indication on this triple colour LED, rather oddly, it's green, red and yellow, as opposed to the usual red, green and blue type things. Uh, any indication that are controlled by this chip, uh, there's no communication at all between these two chips. It doesn't have the charge status thing. This appears to be monitoring the cell voltage and just changing the LEDs to match. Oddities, uh, there's the MOSFET that switches the output to LEDs. Um, this capacitor here is the capacitor for the microcontroller. And there is the option here, of, there's a zero ohm resistor, but they could have put a 10 ohm resistor in there and that would give a slightly buffered power supply, but they've put a zero ohm link, I'm not sure why. I'll show you that in the schematic. Uh, one common resistor for all the LEDs and there's a little uh, pull up resistor for the push button which uh, when you push the button it pulls down to the zero volt rail. Let me grab the schematic for that. Assuming I can find the schematic because I think I've just misplaced that. I have misplaced, there it is. Cramped location. My apologies if that was quite dark. I am kind of working in less than ideal video location here. Work supplied accommodation. It's very small. The circuit board. Uh, we have the USB connector coming on and it only has the positive and negative. There's no data lines or, or the, pro the resistor programming pins. There is the MOSFET that can switch power to the charge chip. And that MOSFET, because it's switching to the positive rail, is controlled from the microcontroller via another MOSFET. I've not written the, the numbers of those MOSFETs on. I should do that. So this one is an A1SHB. A1SHB, which is a P-channel MOSFET. This is the classic A2 um, SHB, which is a classic um, N-channel MOSFET. And oddly, the one that's being used to switch the output, I thought they might just use another A2SHB, but they've used an A09T. So it's uh, got three different types of MOSFETs on it, which is interesting. The status of charge, if it's plugged into a USB power supply, there is a voltage divider here, 100k and 300k, which is used to signal over via this tap from that divider over to the microcontroller. So the microcontroller knows it's charging, it can light the charge status indicator LEDs, but it is, as mentioned, oh look at the shadows, that's terrible. It is uh, strictly monitoring the voltage itself. There is no uh, communication between these two chips. Um, there's uh, the 10K pull-up resistor for the um, push button. There is a direct link I've shown from the positive rail to the microcontroller, but in reality, there is that optional resistor in there, which they've put a, a, a link in, and then a capacitor locally which goes down to the zero volt rail down here. There's a common resistor, there's the three LEDs, and the output has a 10K pull down resistor in the MOSFET, and then a 100 ohm uh, gate resistor. Uh, and when it turns it on, it simply turns on that external PCB with the four 2.7 ohm resistors, giving a total of, of 0.675 ohms, and uh, the nine LEDs. Anything else worth mentioning here? Nothing major. This pull down resistor, because this is uh, effectively active all the time, uh, this pull-down resistor is a very high value um, because ultimately, as long as the system is willing to accept a charge, this uh, will be positive and this will be turned on because uh, it's the only way it can effectively detect that USB is connected. And if something goes wrong, if this lithium cell ever reaches a, a voltage level or even if this processor crashes, that, the, uh, that it shuts off completely, then, then it will stop driving that and it may not take a charge. The answer to that is to give it a quick bump start externally to get it going by maybe uh, re unplugging the lithium cell and just uh, giving it an external supply or uh, bridging over part this part of the circuitry to bring it back into action again. That is it. Uh, the lithium cell, I'm not sure the capacity. Hopefully it's going to be at least 2.5 uh, 
and power, but uh, without getting hot melt, I've got, I've not got solvent here, so I can't really get that cell out. I could potentially run this flat and then put it through a full charge cycle, but um, that's not so easy just because of the situation at the moment that I'm traveling a lot with between here and the work site. It's just, uh, and the hours are quite long. But that is it. Um, other things, there's a 1K resistor for programming the current. Uh, that is more or less the whole circuit. So it's fairly straightforward, but it does have that extra belt and braces approach of these two MOSFETs being able to bypass this charge control chip by turning it off. And it's just quite unusual that the microcontroller itself is monitoring the charge status. But that is a good thing, maybe, because the 4056 tends to have a very slow end of charge. You know, once it's charged, it'll, it'll slowly trickle it until the very end. This microcontroller can pretty much say, it's good enough, it's at four volts or whatever, and I'll just light the green LED and say it's charged, which is quite good. But um, generally speaking, it's quite a nice little light. It's functional. They could have added a lot more functionality in terms of different intensity levels with a microcontroller, but it simply is just on and off, and maybe that's all you need. So very interesting and basic rechargeable work light.